Welcome to the Tech This Out podcast. I'm Walt Makaborski. Today, we're talking about defense tech. I'm here with Kim Unberhagen, who's with BAE. She's a program director. And defense tech seems to be booming, Kim. What's your take? It's a super exciting time to be part of defense. We see the evolution of so many technologies that are out there defeating threats and actually forming new threats. So there's always something for us to do. There is always some, some element that we are just discovering in a new way to respond to threats and su support our customers. You are a legacy company. How long have you been in Austin? What was your original name and what has your evolution been like? Yeah, so BAE Systems has been in Austin with that name since 2000. However, our legacy is Tracor, which should be familiar to a lot of Austinites. We have been in Austin as part of the legacy company since 1955, so almost 70 years. We were formed by four engineers from the University of Texas back in 1955. Storefront of a grocery store was where our first location was on Guadalupe Street. Uh, and we've just progressed from there. We've grown and grown. We now have over 700 people associated with the Austin campus and we are continuing to grow. We're hiring. We've got uh, plans to expand to about 1400 people in Austin. You were there with the early beginnings of MCC, IBM, and they were forging a new path in tech and we've come such a long way. We like to say we were one of the first, if not the first tech companies in Austin. We believe we were the first uh, member of the Fortune 500 to be headquartered in Austin. And we have done so many important things to move the needle and to make a difference with our customers. What would you say is BAE's mission? So our mission in our defense sector is we protect those who protect us. It is what informs everything that we do. It's what motivates our employees. We are all unified around the need to come up with with technologies, with answers, with products that will ensure that our customers, that our end users can execute their missions and get home safely to their families and loved ones. Considering that's your mission, what is the tech ecosystem like here to support your mission? It's growing exponentially all the time. It's an incredibly exciting time to be in Austin. We see things like the Capital Factory, we see the incubators that are bringing new exciting technologies that may have been developed for the commercial sector that we're able to incorporate into what we're doing to protect our, our men and women in uniform. I mean, the list might be pretty long, but how many verticals are you in from avionics to planes? I mean, what are you guys working on? Across BAE systems, we are actually in air, space, sea, land, you name it. We're in Intel. We are in IT. We've we cross the spectrums uh, across BAE systems. In Austin, we are primarily uh, commercially in avionics. On the defense side, we are doing electronic warfare. We're doing uh, sensors. We're doing autonomy. You know, I watched a movie when I was a kid called War Games, right? And then that was one of those things where it was so advanced and high tech and AI, sentient AI, and all this stuff. I mean, it's almost like we're there now. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It It is just astonishing to see what's happening. And the integration of your materials and tech, you are truly a global company. Chances are BAE Tech is in defense systems worldwide. Absolutely. Uh, you, you name the platform, we have some element on it, whether that is a, an avionic system, whether that is a defensive system like Smart D2, we are ensuring that, that our customers can execute their missions and come home. You know, when you talk about warfare and high tech, people tend to get nervous. Yeah. But your mission is to bring our family members home safely. What is that like for you? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, I, I like to say that we are a defense company focused on defense, truly defending our men and women in uniform. And that brings, that brings me into the office every day. It gives so much motivation to what I do. I work with, with soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines across the services. I know how important what we do 
is to them. There are many systems that we build that they will not fly if that's not working properly. So it's critical that what we do works and does what it is supposed to do. A lot of pride built into the company there for sure. Very much. Uh, what? Let's go back to the tech ecosystem in Austin. Mm -hmm. Do you have the talent? Can you recruit the talent? Is the research arms, are they big enough here? Um, I guess Austin is an easy sell. And how deep are you going into your recruiting and getting the word out? Yeah, one of the things that we do is mentoring with the engineering school at the University of Texas. We work with a and We provide internships uh, at the college level. We also do uh, workforce development with SkillPoint Austin for some of our uh, touch labor type activities in our factories. But then we're also working with the STEM community, right? We're going down into elementary schools, into middle schools. We sponsor 14 FIRST Robotics teams across the greater Austin area. We're working with Girl Start. We're working with the Austin uh, Science Education Foundation. Um, we are working with the Boys and Girls Clubs. We're making sure that the kids in the Austin area know how many amazing things they can do if they work, decide to pursue a path of technology. Is that important for BAE to, BAE to create that pipeline early? It, absolutely, it's critical. Uh, we've had generations of employees come to work at BAE Systems in Austin. We've had grandparents who then passed on the torch to their kids who passed on the torch to their kids. We are actually, we have a couple of fourth generation employees within BAE Systems in Austin. And it's critical that we get people who are passionate about what we're doing and who have the skills to make sure that we stay at the forefront of technology and defense. And before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about the future. Is it getting faster, smaller, better? And the tech, it just seems mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's in my mind, really hard to stay ahead of it and to imagine what's going to happen next, which is why I'm really glad that I'm surrounded by super smart technologists who can look at what's happening in the world and figure out how to respond. I know you're a huge compass, company with a legacy uh, name. Uh, I also wanted to ask you quickly about the support financially. Do you see the money being funneled into the startups and the ecosystem to support the next level of defense tech? I, I do. I do. I've, I've, there is a, a intent within the Department of Defense to ensure that we are partnering, large companies are partnering with small businesses. So that's part of it. We actually reach out to some of those innovators ourselves and try to figure out ways to support them in their journey to bring bring products and ideas forward. Uh, and yeah, it's it's just a really exciting time. Additionally, you know, what we do as BAE Systems is invest in not only those new technologies, but also in growing our community in Austin and being a good partner in the community, whether that's with an organization like Caritas that supports veterans, or whether that's something like the the Texan by Nature Foundation that ensures that, that we're supporting uh, sustainability and environmental responsibility. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure, and I can't wait to see what BAE does next. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to talk about the toys at BAE, specifically D2. Uh, joining me now is Matthew Jamrog. He's a program director, our tech director, actually, at BAE. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Uh, D2, what is it? Smart D2, so it's dis a smart uh, dispense and defend. So it, it's a countermeasure dispenser system. Um, and what it's designed to do is provide the last line of defense for our men and women that are in aircraft by uh, expending flare and chaff um, and smart flare and chaff and smart expendables to defeat incoming missiles uh, to protect our, our men and women. The first thing that comes to my mind, I mean, on my, this is just a movie reference, but you know, when you see Iron Man flying through space and missiles are coming at him and he shoots these flares out and all the missiles explode yeah. around him and he flies away. 
That's exactly what we do. That's exactly what the system does. Uh, and it's becoming harder to do that. Uh, the missile technology from our adversaries is getting uh, better and better. Uh, and we have to counteract that. And that's exactly what our Smart D2 technology does is it leapfrogs uh, our adversaries by providing smart uh, capability within those uh, countermeasures to, to defeat those missiles. When you say smart, you know, I've seen pilots say, oh, missile three o'clock and they'll do a, a, a maneuver or they'll do the flares. Does this system, because it's smart, identify it before sometimes maybe even the pilot sees it? Yeah, so where uh, Smart T2 system is operating in the milliseconds time frame. So it's able to take sensor data from multiple sensors on the platform, fuse it together to say, oh, I, I see that it's this specific threat, and then provide a response. And all that happens within milliseconds uh, before the pilot may even be aware that there's a missile in the air to, to protect them. When you say it identifies a threat, can it tell the pilot, oh, this is a Tomahawk missile, it's coming right at you? Or something yeah, like that. it can be very specific on what type of missile. And that's what the smart technology brings is, is that sensor fusion of multiple sensors to really narrow down exactly what's coming at it to be able to provide the right response. So in general, I know you could tell me, but then you'd have to kill me. Yeah. Uh, what kind <laughs> of planes are equipped with this or what kind of aircraft are equipped with this? Yeah, so we're on lots of different types of aircraft, uh, primarily on rotary wings. So helicopters, lots of helicopters, as well as fixed wing aircraft. So um, we, we're on both of those. And is this system in use and deployed now, or is it upgrading an older system that's in use? Yeah, so uh, our legacy is the ALE-47, which was also developed uh, here out of Austin, and that's been in the field for, for decades now. Uh, this is the next generation of that system that we're developing now and, and starting to field uh, as an upgrade system you know, today. The, um, the technology, tell me about what is integrated in it, in it. Um, you know, from the recognition system, I don't know if it's LIDAR or radar, um, are you using AI to build the program and integrate it into the airplane systems? I mean, how high end is this and or what, what are some of the components? Yeah, it's very high end. And um, so, you know, our system is that last piece that actually uh, expends those expendables. So we're responsible uh, for taking in that data, doing some sensor fusion of multiple different sensors, uh, IR, RF, uh, other types of technologies, and fuse that together to understand what threat that we're seeing. Uh, and then we're also responsible for saying, okay, we know it's this threat, what's the right response? And what's the right combination of different expendables that we have to do in order to do that? And then our job is to uh, expend those expendables. Well, um, considering the speed of innovation, what do you see the future looking like with the materials and how AI is factoring into making things more efficient? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's rapid. The technology is, is rapid and, and we have to respond rapidly uh, to try to, to be ahead of our adversaries. So uh, miniaturization is a big thing. So what used to be a, a, a computer that would be in a closet uh, can now fit in your cell phone, right? And, and that type of technology is, is getting into our adversaries' hands and they're using it against us. So we're doing the same thing on our dispenser systems to put smart electronics into those expendables. So now they have a computer inside of them. They're able to, uh, the expendables themselves are able to do a lot more than they used to, you know, just a, a few years ago. Some of the animations you shared with me were pretty incredible to see how quickly Smart D2 reacts. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, as an employee of BA, what do you see as the mission? Yeah, so our mission really is that we protect those that protect us, and and it means a lot to everybody that works on on these programs, uh, and you know that's that's what Smart D two is. We we are the last line of defense uh, for a missile that's coming at at somebody, right? And our job is to bring those men and women home safely to their families, and Smart D two is the last piece that does that for them. So it, it's really important to us. It's important to everybody uh, at the Austin facility uh, to, to be part of that mission. And, and there's a lot of pride in what we do and, and people go into work every day understanding that mission and, and, and knowing that they're part of something bigger, right? When they're, when they're, they're doing their uh, designs and reviews uh, you know, in the back of their head, they understand that, that this is going somewhere, that it's being used today and, and it's really critical to our, our people. So would you say defense tech is really booming right now? Yeah, it's absolutely. It's uh, it's uh, moving really fast at the speed of light. Uh, I, I think um, you know technology is just exponentially growing, right? We're seeing that, like you said, with AI and and other things. And um, our adversaries use those technologies, so we have to use those technologies. And and staying ahead is a, is a cat and mouse game type of thing. And we're trying to stay ahead to to be the cat, right? And um, and develop the technologies and be ahead, so that way we're prepared for when our adversaries are are fielding their technologies. Matthew, BAE, this is an exciting time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us. And 
the Tech This Out podcast. Remember, you can check this out every Friday night on CBS Austin. We'll see you next time.